Okay, now the diagnosis is made, and of course, the first question is what to do next. Um, this was published in 1997, but hasn't changed much over the years in terms of um, the validity of this. Namely, if you do not perform stem cell transplantation, the long-term prognosis of JMML is really poor. By contrast, with stem cell transplant, approximately, or let's say, almost half of the children can be cured. So there um, was an update on this in 2005 that says, that, and you can see some progress that was made from a long-term probability of event-free survival of 39% going up to something around 50. If, for whatever reason, stem cell transplantation is not an option, there's a lot of other things that have been tried, including AML-type intensive polychemotherapy or a rather low-dose maintenance-type chemotherapy, maybe single-agent therapy to bring down the leukemic burden, retinoids, or even no therapy at all. And there's a nice paper published by Bergstresser in uh, Pediatric Blood and Cancer, I think in 2006, that put together all the experience with um, treatments other than stem cell transplantation. And the conclusion was that all these approaches have a similar probability of partial responses, stable disease, or even progressive disease. So this is important. Even if you do nothing, some of these children will have something that looks like a partial response. Another important point that was made in that paper was that all the responses were transient. So none of this can really cure JMML. So these are, I think, the challenges that remain. We need to find treatment modalities that obviate the need for stem cell transplantation, which brings its own array of problems, including the high intensity conditioning and toxicity. Maybe develop a juvenile therapy that decreases the incidence of relapse after HSCT. I didn't explicitly mention this, but you all know that relapse is the main problem with transplant in JMML. And it would also be most important to be able to prospectively identify patients who, what's that, who benefit from less aggressive strategies. So if you remember, even in the non-transplantation group, there was approximately 5% of long-term survivors without intensive therapy. So it would be good to be able to identify those and maybe spare them the need for transplant. <clears throat> 